president of the Haynes Group. Tom, Tom come on up. Uh, this company goes back, uh, traces its history back to 1962. Started as a construction company that has really evolved in today's, uh, into today's integrated materials and development company. Uh, Tom's philosophy is uh, making people's lives better uh, and the world a better place. And this is what he does every day. That's right. Tom is uh, second generation, and his sons Patrick is here, and Adam, um, represent the third generation of, of the business. Um, I want to tell you that just a few short weeks ago, Tom uh, was recognized by the Chamber with the coveted Gold Seal Award uh, for his uh, leadership, uh, his philanthropy in our community. He's just been a great corporate citizen. He's got an exciting project underway in Oxford. He's going to tell us all about it. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. And uh, I guarantee you, my wife, who is in the back room, wishes that she could control the microphone when I talk. So, and, and Rob, you know, what did you say? That's all I got? <laughs> so I, have, I have to get up and follow Rob Sento. Okay? So that's all he's got. So it's always great to listen to Rob and to, we were down your building yesterday um, seeing a doctor for something. Not stealing tenants, promise you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're impressive, really. And great job on the corner, too. So, really. So, as, uh, as Bill said, uh, I'm Tom Haynes. I'm the president of Haynes Group. And I'm going to be real quick because I think that we found that the question and answers will, for, will be a lot more interesting than really my talking. So uh, um, we, were, we were founded in 1962. And currently now, uh, I run Haynes Group, which is a Haynes Materials and Development Company. Uh, and that's important to sort of tell you that because our company in the material side, we run five quarries in the state of Connecticut, we used to have some ready mix, which I'll show you a picture of, um, and we own, actually we're into the retail hardware store and um, landscape masonry stores, and we actually do architectural stone manufacturing. So, um, and I bring that to you to tell you that because a lot of our development is really founded in the idea of, of taking the land and transforming it. So we, we like Rob, are developers that actually, um, we, we roll our sleeves up. So we're, we do a lot of our own development with um, doing our own site work, site development, and take on some challenging sites, and we move material and crush material, which I think you're doing down on the corner down there, and it's a great job. So uh, as I said, we have about 120 people and about 20 people in the company devoted to the development side. We're in Seymour, Connecticut. We're right around the corner. I know uh, Larry is not here. And I saw Phil Clark. I don't know if he's still here. Um, I have to tell you, we have watched from a builder's perspective, watched Larry transform the top of, uh, top of the hill in Seymour. And I think that I'm not going to steal basement systems thunder because you're getting up soon, but um, phenomenal. You, you really are doing a great job in Seymour. So um, our focus is really is on always been on the northern part of the the valley. Um, we're sort of the small developer, contrary to you know the guy down in Shelton who does you know has, has a bigger office buildings. Our focus is more primarily in the northern part of, of the valley. So um, we have a few projects that we're going to. I'd like to tell you about what we're working on. And it starts with starts with me hitting the clicker. Okay, I'm sorry. So, so as I said, our projects primarily are in the northern part of the court or northern part of the state. But just so you know, our construction side we built all across the state. So we built schools, university. We we've done a lot of construction for the state for for a lot of municipal work. So our background is really in large construction. But on the development side, our focus has really been mostly in the areas where we own own the property and develop. So. Uh, we start down here on the southern part. We have 30 acres tied to uh, another 60 acres on the Route 8 corridor that we have the Haynes Outdoor Living Showroom, which you see. We took a concrete plant and turned that into a, um, um, a retail center. Uh, and then we move up into 
Oxford, and we have a couple large projects there. We're up in up in Naugatuck, small uh, small retail development up there, and then we have a large piece of property that we do some stone manufacturing that we plan to develop in Seymour, which is really very very interesting project, um, almost as interesting as Quarry Rock. So, what do we got here? What is is a video. Am I supposed to do something? So what that, that was is our, our new outdoor living center down on uh, Derby Avenue, which is part of 30 acres attached to another 60 acres. So we own a, about 100 acres all along Route 8 right there. And if most of everybody that came up to Route 8 would say, our plan is um, down the road is to connect Derby Avenue on one side of the northern side down to the lower side so we don't, so we don't have to get on and off the highway on, uh, in Seymour just to get to the southern part of the state. So we do have plans for that at some point. And if you notice when you go down, it's a mountain. So most of the stuff that we do, we're not afraid to tackle and buy property that has a mountain. And this actually was a mountain at one point. This employs, I don't know, 20, 30 people now, uh, providing a sort of a little bit of a facelift. We used to have a concrete plant here, and um, thank God we stopped selling, buying watermelons for a dollar and selling them for 70 cents, because that's what the concrete industry is. So we, we close that down, and that's what this is. 31 acres, 10 plus jobs, 30,000 of Charlotte. Um, so we jump a little bit north, because our focus really is the, the, the Route 8 corridor. Uh, we have 220 plus acres that, uh, that connects Route 67 and Route 47 uh, in Beacon Falls. And we call it, um, Seymour, we call it Seymour Beacon Falls, and it's got a master plan for transit-oriented development. Uh, Kevin, I, I think Kevin or Ed had talked about uh, TODs and typically not up in this area because you, you need a train station. Well, the one thing that I have that Rob doesn't have is two mile of rail that eventually I might get a train station where Shelton does. Shelton does not have a train station. So, so what this is, uh, is we call it a transit-oriented development. Uh, I think Fred Massari is here. Last night there was a, a meeting with, um, with CONDOT and discussion about what the improvements to the Route 8 uh, Waterbury line. Uh, so we think that's a vital part of, of this development moving forward. We purchased this land from Stop and Shop when they developed Stop and Shop store back in the early 2000, 2002, 2004. And we purchased it with the idea of a major development. So what the, the, the backbone of the project is meant to be a link between Route 67 and Route, uh, and Route 42 uh, in Beacon Falls. And as, as the economy is, is kind of changing, towns are starting to talk about uh, finding ways to share their services. And Beacon Falls and Seymour have supported this project. And what we would end up doing is we would either add or relocate the train station in downtown Seymour and locate it somewhere right up on the right up in the middle. So you can picture this stop and shop in Seymour, Route 47 up, up uh, Route 42 in Beacon Falls, road goes through and train station gets relocated somewhere right in here. So we have about 220 acres. Uh, we have already worked with the uh, the state and we've committed to giving two miles of access so the greenway will cut through here. We'll have a train stop and about 220 acres of really raw land. There's, we've got one building, we run the stone manufacturing on a nice old building, but in essence it'll be a blank slate to do a major development. When this happens, 
I hope that I'm still here. Uh, we met one time with the, with the state of Connecticut of the DOT. They called us up because um, a few years ago, Congresswoman Delora had, was able to uh, get $750,000 to help fund and start this. Unfortunately, politics takes what it is. The government couldn't figure out how to get this and find a benefit to it. Believe it or not, the government did not spend the majority of that money and they took it back. So it, it was a little bit frustrating for us, but Congresswoman Delora had thought this was a great project. Both towns have thought it's a great project. And so I do, do expect after we move off of Quarry Walk that this is really the next focus for Haynes development. So, uh, could have over a million square foot of all different type of uses. Um, I, it's got a great location for High Bay Light Industrial on the northern end up in, uh, up on the Beacon Falls, and the Beacon Falls end of it, and believe it or not, we are less than, less than a half a mile from the on-off ramps to get uh, on Route 8. So, uh, Kathy Ekstrom, who works with me, quickly was taking notes down when Kevin was talking about that. So, um, we, we think of it mixed use and um, be big development for the local area. And again, I said Greenway will be coming through there. Uh, we own some property up in Naugatuck, adjacent to our our quarry. We have a quarry in Naugatuck, our Route 63, and we just built a 17,000 square foot plan of fitness and have some other retail uh, pad sites that we're looking to uh, to market. So we've got some development up in uh, up in Naugatuck. See Kathy if anybody wants any space in all of um, And then lastly, we have a project in Oxford. It's called Quarry Walk. Um, it is our very first quarry that, that our company bought in 1999-2000. It was the start of the Haynes Materials Company, which we figured out how to take a quarry and turn it into a repurposed, useful, uh, useful life. Our development company, or our, our company in general, we've got a philosophy that you always leave a place better than you started it. So we're not the quarry guys that leave a hole that we fill with water and we don't leave it for a good purpose. So what we did was we started to map this out in uh, 2002 and with the development idea of creating a center. And at the time, uh, Oxford was going through a bunch of development, which I think most people know of by the airport. I saw Mark Raskowski here. I, is, he, is Mark still here? No. So a guy named Mark Raskowski is here. And so um, our focus has been a lot up in Oxford, Meadowbrook Estates, and Quarry Walk. Uh, Mark, I, I wanted to mention him because he is what I consider to be the real big developer in Oxford that he, down the road, quietly, and believe it or not, 15 years later, to service quarry walk. So we actually had a master plan to do that. So we took an, our first development in Oxford, other than the McMansions, you know, subdivisions that we would normally do, is an over 55, uh, 236 units, 122 acres. We started this in 2004, I think. We've got, I think we're down to 20, about around 20 homes left. It's been a fantastic project. It's, it's ridden the, uh, the high and the low, and the product has has just been able to um, stay stay through that that period of the downturn. So Meadowbrook Estates, 122 acres, 236 units. And the reason why I'm, I'm showing you this is that that in our development philosophy, we're in a little bit different. That we believe that residential and the retail commercial have to mix together, um, and that's what we do. And was there a, was there no video with this? Go back. Go back. back. Yeah. That's we'll, we'll skip it. Uh, about 20 units left, um, and they're still moving. And, and the the key to the key to this is that we are providing housing not just for some local people, but we find that most of our buyers are actually from the out of, out of the area, as you imagine. We're getting Fairfield County and New York coming up, and been a great success, as is Oxford Greens has. So this leads to our last uh, our last project, 
is Quarry Walk. We have 32 acres in Oxford. Oh, we've got an aerial. I think this is as recent as today. Here's an overview of Quarry Walk. It's currently, we have about somewhere around 260, probably close to 300,000 square foot of non-residential. We are approaching about 160,000 square foot of rented space, uh, anchored by Market 32, and a whole series of other smaller retail, averaging anywhere from, uh, I'd say, a, a 1,200, 1,500 square foot up to about 17,000 square foot in the small stuff. Uh, that's our ACE hardware, uh, and it's so we decided to, to start to build this, and we, the town said, well, we'll let you build a residential if you give us a town center, and so uh, they said, if you don't understand what a town center is, go to Vermont, look at the green, and we don't care if you lose, all, lose a lot of money on it, that's what the town wants. <laughs> he says, oh, that's great, that's how towns work. And so we went up and uh, started to research, and really, we through that, we decided it's a great idea. And so we created what is called Quarry Walk, and it's three. It's around 300,000 square foot, and then about, and then we got approved conception for 150 residential units. We're designing those now, but it's about 300,000 square foot. We have Griffin Hospitals coming in after you get them in down in Shelton. They're coming in. They're taking about 13, 15,000 square foot. We got a medical office building. We have a 15,000 square foot daycare, one of the best uh, educational play care, anchored um, with, uh, we're working with the Y, I think I saw, is George in here? George was here, George has been helpful and instrumental that we might get the YMCA to put it, to come in here and put a full branch. So 260,000 to 300,000 square foot, well on its way to develop and a bunch of small shops on the green. This is, was the place three years ago, and I believe we have just a quick fly through on the uh, on the green. Do we, is this a video? Is that video? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. All right, so uh, residential, uh, this is just a concept that we're working through to present to the town next month for 150 market rate uh, apartments. Uh, I really took heart to what um, Ed and Kevin were talking about, especially Ed, and our feeling is is that the, the real estate market in Oxford has, has never seen any, any housing. A, a statistic is uh, Oxford has 94% of all the residential housing is single family homes. There's not a town around that touches that. Middlebury is around 90. Southbury, great diversification, 52% single family homes. So we believe that Oxford is a prime, it didn't have a grocery store up until a year ago, I mean, think about it. And they have an average income, a household income of around 108 or $110,000. So Oxford has the means for, for all of this. They just have not figured out how to allow and how to open itself up to, um, let's just say, diverse housing. So uh, this will be the first attempt and we'll have 150 apartments and we believe the market will support those apartments. Talk about where all the rock came from and the big side from. <laughs> <laughs> where the rock came from? <laughs> so this rock, so uh, we love quarries, we love stone. Raised my kids to always say rocks 
our money. They pick them up, throw them away, and say, whoa, 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 rocks are money. <laughs> but we figured out how to take rocks and turn them into architectural pieces. But uh, we, we mined this as our first quarry, and we've got a fabulous, what we call quarry walk, built in. And this is a real picture of, of, of what, what exists now. Uh, with the railing superimposed, a really cool quarry walk, and when we get it paved and developed, it really will be very cool. So this rock is all came from the quarry that's here, and it's picked up and mined by uh, 